let's give a big warm welcome to Steve. <laughs> what happens when the web team drifts apart? What happens when they lose sight of shared goals? Everyone optimizes their own chart. Each role maximizes their own controls. Hear this story of a new stakeholder who asks for a seemingly simple tweak and is answered by a chain of scolders, each too siloed to find what they all seek. This session will examine dynamics present in nearly all web teams, trying to balance many different metrics without clear guidance and without crying. Before you get lost in the web ops weeds, navigate the hierarchy of needs. This is uh, indeed the dramatical and uh, the dramatic <laughs> and poetical tale of the website Hierarchy of Needs. Much of it is indeed written in iambic pentameter. Even the title is in iambic pentameter. I do like to begin presentations giving you a sense of, of what to expect. So yes, you can expect much of this presentation is written. 10 syllables per line. Why? Uh, well, I'll kind of answer that. Uh, I also you know, want to give you a sense of what to expect uh, plot-wise. We are indeed going to hear the story of a new stakeholder, a fictional director of alumni giving at fictional demo university. If I had known about the university of tube from this morning, maybe I could have written it around that. But now we have fictional demo university. This new director of alumni giving will indeed ask for a seemingly simple tweak. And we will then meet all the other people who have been working at Demo University for uh, a longer period of time, focused on the website, and as we will see, have been too narrowly focused in their own silos, a, a common problem in the web ecosystem. The reason I want to tell that hyper-specific, fictionalized story is to get at what I think is a broader, but more general truth about web development, especially in higher education. I think pretty much everyone working in web development in higher education is aiming for an idealized future where, where we could say confidently that our web presence fully supports the mission of our institution. Universities have such grand mission statements supporting all of humanity through knowledge and uh, <laughs> incredible uh, things. Now, we're coming from a past where higher education as uh, an ecosystem was early to the web. In the 90s, just getting HTML onto the World Wide Web on your own .edu domain name was an amazing accomplishment. In the 30-ish years since then, we've gotten stuck in what I think is a ever-present present that's a bit messy. We could say, oh, we have built a feature or integrated a third-party service to satisfy all of the stakeholders' requests, and it's a mess. I think the present status quo isn't working well for, every, <laughs> for anyone. Uh, uh, I've been talking for a few minutes here, and I haven't really introduced uh, myself. My name is Steve Persh. I've been at Pantheon for uh, about nine years now. Uh, in my first year at Pantheon, I attended the very first WP campus uh, in person down in Florida. That was a, a great experience. In the years since then, I've gotten onto this hierarchy of needs idea, comparing Maslow's hierarchy of needs to websites. I first presented that in 2018 at, at the Yale Digital Conference uh, for Drupal Camp Belarus. I rewrote it into kind of the narrative version you'll see here today, but without the iambic pentameter part. And I also did that uh, with a WordPress focus at uh, WordCamp US 2019 as well. And then the, you know, the world fell apart a few months later. <laughs> and one of the things I asked myself uh, in those pandemic times was, what would I do if we ever get back to like in-person conferences? I want to you know, do more creative, fun presentations. And what if I take that presentation, that was my last presentation before the world fell apart, and I rewrote it in iambic pentameter. So that is you know, where we are now, and I hope 
people online can hear me. It's possible they can't, and that's what Rachel is troubleshooting. If not, I have my own backup recording system happening right now as well. I've got a microphone here. I've got a phone here. So hopefully this will be saved for posterity. And even if it's not, uh, well, I'll, I'll be doing it in two months. Should I just pause? Just pause. That was a nice photo of us. It was? I know. <laughs> eight, eight years ago. Eight years. Very timely. OK. I'm going to be honest. Let's I switch this to built-in microphone. It is on USB. Oh. There we go. All right. How about now? Can we all hear, see? Can you hear me hear now? Us? Yes. Okay. Yes. We did it. We did it. All right. Uh, now, a uh, hierarchy of needs for people, uh, an oversimplified, perhaps problematic way of looking at how we human beings organize our needs. At the baseline, we have our physiological needs. We need food, water, shelter, and so on. Above that, we need safety, some sense of financial security. We need health care. If those needs are satisfied, we can ask, where do we belong in society amongst our family our, and friends, our coworkers? And then we can ask, do we feel good about that place where we uh, fit in? Do we have a sense of self-esteem? And then perhaps, ideally, we are reaching self-actualization. Now, I think there's, as I said, a comparison here with websites. Websites probably will not self-actualize. Uh, I hope they. I hope they don't. Let's 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 not have that. But websites do exist uh, to drive some form of conversion. I'll talk in a minute about what I mean by conversion. Websites then need to build up. Web teams need to build up appropriately towards a conversion. At the base, we do need servers. Even in the cloud era, where it's easy to forget that there are servers somewhere, there are still servers somewhere that need internet bandwidth, they need electricity, and they need stability. They need to not crash if there is a flood of traffic. They should uh, ideally not uh, get hacked when there is uh, a security vulnerability discovered. They need to stay in compliance with all sorts of things. In the university context, there are often very strict branding guidelines. There are accessibility regulations websites need to be in compliance with. These bottom three layers are kind of asking, is the website broken? Does it exist? Is it wrong? And we should be answering those questions well. But ideally, we're spending more time asking, is the website good? Is the website of quality? And somewhat separate from that, is the website actually delivering on the conversions it is supposed to deliver on? Uh, we'll see here in our, our story time uh, coming in a minute or so that there's a rough alignment between the people who work on a website and this hierarchy of needs. I want to emphasize, though, that before I get into these characters in detail, this is not a hierarchy of people. In the real world version of any one of these, any one of these roles could be the most tenured person. Any one of these roles could be the highest paid person of these six. And in some ways, that makes it trickier, that there's uh, a need for collaboration that is cross-functional, that is not dependent on one department or one person saying my way or the highway. I think that is a net benefit, but in some ways, it makes things trickier. With all of that, let us now meet Alexi. Meet the new addition to Demo U. Alexi is starting his first day as the director of alumni giving. He's settling into his new office, pulls out his piping thermos, pours coffee with purpose, boots his Microsoft Surface, his personal Surface. No time to wait for the surplus laptop IT purchased. Ernest Alexi loads spreadsheets certain. He'll search out some surfeit spending. Surfing through Excel cells, he writes notes in cursive. He circles where the cash balance worsens. His predecessor, a careless person, couldn't raise funds, and his chances furnished. Alexi wordlessly wonders how to, one hour into a new job, Work it so that he can rise with no disturbance. Maybe parties for alumni nurses? As he jots ideas on sticky notes, Demo University's president knocks on Alexi's open office door. Eager Alexi tap taps the touch screen, starting, stumbling through his explication, but he can see her attentions waning. 
She has no interest in the findings Alexei has spread across sheets and thoughts disjointed. She cuts him off and she says, make a big impact with the website first. You must double alumni donations measured through Demo U's website and soon. That's your top priority. Do that first. The president smiles forcedly and leaves. Deflated, Alexei loads the website. It seems fine, nothing noteworthy, fine. It loads fast enough, it looks fine enough. How fast can you double from fine to good? Wait, on websites of peer institutions, giving is in every header menu. Alexi has a clear challenge for sure, but the answer seems more than simple. Just add giving to the header menu and Alexi can tackle bigger things. Uh, now, I, I told you we were gonna meet all these characters. I didn't tell you we were going to meet the president of the university, but isn't that how it goes in these sorts of projects? There's always someone higher up that you didn't know was gonna have an opinion on your work who comes in and has an opinion on your work. Now, uh, there's a prequel to this story as well. Maybe someday I'll do the, the full prequel version. The short prequel version is they finally just did the big Gutenberg relaunch. They finally got the redesigned, rebuilt website in Gutenberg out the door. They're in the block editor world, and it went mostly okay. It went about as well as such a big redesign relaunch project can go. These projects where you take a semester or two semesters or more, and you rethink all of the plugins for the new site. You question every element on every page for the new site. You Ensure that the new site is going to perform well on all the devices for all the stakeholders for the new site. All the while, we sometimes fall into a linguistic trap where we start calling the current site the old site. No, no, no. As long as that site is serving traffic from your .edu, that is your current site. As much as I enjoy the poetry of this presentation, there's a good chance that for one person in the room, this is the most important detail. Please do not say old site when it is actually the current <laughs> site. If you fall into that trap, you can go wrong in a whole bunch of ways. And we will see some of the personal fallout, some of the uh, interpersonal fallout that comes uh, with doing a big never-ending relaunch project. So let's now meet our director of communications. Changing the header menu requires politics. He'll have to convince Sarah, the director of communications. Sarah's family dates back to the first brick affixed to Demo University's foundation. Her family probably fixed her admission and employment, so thinks everyone she meets. She fears wants to evict her from this job she actually earned by driving the clicks. Yes, she's surrounded by some intergenerational picks. There's her great-grandfather's 50-yard kick to win the Grand Bowl in 19-some-6. But Sarah's on her iMac, deep in the mix, looking at pages, asking what to nix, a relaunch fumbled like a bundle of sticks. Now she's thinking through SEO tricks. This job's more than Google Analytics. Emails pile up from all of her critics. They backseat drive asking dumb questions while clocks talk tick. Have you heard of TikTok? Gosh, that's where kids these days record their antics. She digs through her purse to find the chantix. <laughs> she sighs and thinks she's among relics. Then Alexi knocks, looking angelic. I just had an idea. Well, kind of. Alexi decides to just spit it out. We need to add giving to the menu, the header menu that's on every page. Sarah's impressed at the gall, the gumption to make this request 
his first impression? Alexei's clearly up to something, but can it be done without regression? Sarah knows that header menu space ain't cheap. If the prior alum director did his job, it'd be in that menu for keeps. But now, will it squeeze in and not break the grid? Signed in, Sarah edits the menu fast, but oh no, it does that thing where you have one line of links and add another last, and now two lines wrapped look broke in half. How can they resolve this simple, small bug? Let's see what happens and who else will meet when we crack the hood, look under the rug, and find just how deep this hole need be dug. Uh, spoiler alert, we're, go we're gonna dig the hole <laughs> very deep here. Uh, so the director of communications and people like the director of alumni giving should be having conversations about conversions. How can we make this job or this website do its job better, but we're getting distracted by other things, especially in the fallout of a never-ending relaunch project. Uh, I wanna highlight, what exactly do I mean by conversion? Now, there are, there are a few different types of conversions for professional websites. Uh, let's start with lead generation in the middle. This is what Pantheon's own website exists to do primarily. If you visit pantheon.io, you'll pretty quickly figure out that, oh, meet with our sales team or sign up for a free account over in dashboard.pantheon.io. Other sites are directly monetizing through e-commerce. It is a shopping website, very direct relationship to conversions. Some websites, the content itself is next to uh, ad slots and you're trying to maximize page views, maximize uh, ad impressions. Some websites, the website itself is the advertisement, and you want it to then be seen by as many people as possible, unique users reached. And then some websites, you want a smaller group of people visiting over and over again, and you're maximizing daily active users. The reason I like to show this slide in the context of higher education is I think this illuminates well why are higher education websites so darn complicated? Why do we need events like WP Campus? It's because Higher education websites need at least these four, and maybe even the fifth one. Lead generation in the context of higher education, we'd probably call that like recruiting the next class of incoming freshmen. But the complexity that needs to be added to a website in order to do that effectively is similar. And you might be selling to those uh, potentially incoming freshmen football tickets, sweatshirts, and any other uh, number of things through e-commerce. Uh, you might be trying to impress those high schoolers with the amazing cutting edge research done by your institution. And in fact, you want the whole world to know about the amazing cutting edge research done at your institution. You wanna maximize unique users reached. Oh, and once people do become students, they enroll, then there may be online learning portals and you need to bring them back over and over again. So you gotta maximize daily active users. And although higher education websites probably aren't going to have those sketchy like taboola ads uh, intermixed in your content, the status quo higher education homepage still functions as like a series of advertising slots in a slider. So even if you're not monetizing ad impressions, you might be taking on all of the complexity of all five broad types of conversions. That is part of why higher education websites are so darn complicated, and it is part of why communication can break down as we move and meet more people here. Ideally, someone in a director of communications type of role would have some space in their brain and their day for thinking about conversions, and they'd also have time and space to think about like, okay, but how does the website actually function? Because now we'll meet the people who are more directly concerned with like, how does the website really function? At a coffee shop just south of Sarah, we find Eduardo, the senior designer, softly sipping espresso, taking pause. The caffeine hits and his mind slowly thaws. Feeling raw from endless tweaks and tickets that gnawed at his soul, yet weren't his to fix. Pre-dawn phone buzzes of screenshotted bugs talked over in meetings like he lost his lungs. In the weeks since the relaunch, he's had to relearn how and when to relax his jaw. He nearly fell into Gutenberg's maw. As the relaunch spun wildly, pitch and yaw, Eduardo has a new self-imposed law. 
straw first. No phone, no screens. First, he must draw. Every morning, he brawls with blocks again. But he's in charge when it's paper and pen. When he's done, he'll show WordPress who's the boss. He'll win the next round, no matter the cost. Then, in walks Sarah, relieved to find Ed. His teeth grind and his stomach turns in dread. Sarah relays the menu thingy, and it's clear she wants a quick guarantee that Ed will design a nice fix shortly. <laughs> but Ed thinks, this is how you come to me? Our first convo in the relaunch debris, urgent requests from unfit appointees. Ed is fed up with these petty bourgeois bourgeoisie. He has no advanced degree, but he's got more guts than these PhDs with names on the marquee who love to quote Trotsky while they're brown nosing a trustee. How can I prove that they can just trust me? Is what he thinks, and again leaves unsaid. He grabs his laptop presenting the screen. Sarah hovers. Ed glares. Pull up a chair. Ed taps the tab key. You want more links there? Wait. Tap, tap. Tap, tab. The focus is stuck. Here we go. This right here is just our luck. Ed says, I don't know all the legalese. Let me think before you interrupt me. We can't slide on accessibility, says Sarah, fearing lawsuit inquiries. Yeah, I know, says Ed, now the assignee of problems bigger than menu entries. I heard a few knowing laughs in, in the back of the room. Uh, is, th is this feeling uh, a bit real? Is some of this, uh, all right, head nods, great. So, uh, so why is there so much friction here between people who should be focused on, is our website Good, that's what they should be having a conversation about so the director of communications can then work with others to make sure it's actually uh, converting. Uh, yesterday, I walked over to the Smithsonian. I, I uh, came in a day early because I wanted to get this selfie. It's the 50th anniversary of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, a book that is not much about Zen and not much about motorcycle maintenance. It is, it is more about a man uh, recovering from having lost his mind, trying to define the word quality. The basic idea in this book is that there's an unnecessary divide between the rational, mechanical, analytical sort of view, the mechanics view of the motorcycle, and the, the book calls it the romantic point of view, the person who may just be riding a motorcycle and not really aware at all of how the motorcycle works. This book posits, oh, we need to unify those two things in order to, to get a clear picture of quality. Whether or not you buy into that premise, it gets more and more difficult if even on like the mechanical side, we're further and further subdividing. And in the web development world, the last decade or so has been near endless subdivision and subdivision and subdivision. It'd be like if you don't have a motorcycle mechanic, you have a mechanic only for the front wheel and someone else who only works on the back wheel and someone who only works on the engine. They're going to have a hard time answering but is this motorcycle good? Is this motorcycle quality if the motorcycle is so complex that they don't have time to think of anything beyond the front wheel? Now, uh, it'll get even more complicated as we go and meet our front end developer uh, and think a bit about the compliance layer. Meet Eleanor, the front end specialist, well equipped with her MacBook Air lifted high above a standard standing desk, with monitors splitting JavaScript snippets stacked, overflowing, VS Code going, NPM installed, Webpack is showing. She was right all along. Gutenberg gone. Now it's clear to her where things went all wrong. Retreated now, she feels less defeated. She's in her happy place with no WordPress, just the components, isolated, clean. Now she can make sense of what it all means. 
As her fingers dance together upon the cherry switches, she quickly catches Ed's eye as he rounds cubicle corners. He sent no slacks. Why invade her quarters? She takes off her pink AirPod Max headphones, pausing playback of dancing on my own. She quickly complains, I was in the zone. Ed relays the problems, now they're not alone. Eleanor closes storybook and signs into WordPress and sees a sign of hope. The plugin supplying the header has an accessibility update. Yay! Ed says, wonderful, so we're good here, right? Eleanor says, I'm sorry, uh, maybe, nope. Looks like we also have security updates to apply. We need those today. Uh, Ed doesn't understand. It's just WordPress, update the stuff. Isn't that your job too? Uh, no, says L. I'm afraid things might regress. Nick does updates. I'll get this in his queue. Nick, the back end dev, isn't at his desk. Luckily, Eleanor knows where to check. The problems with this site keep on stacking. Links, headers, lawsuits, and now risks of hacking. We're struggling with compliance here. Uh, uh, jumping back mentally to that previous interlude, compliance is best thought about holistically. Yes, there are individual elements to the website, but a compliance officer probably wants to know, is the website holistically, all of it, is it secure? Is the website, all of it, is it accessible? Because if not, that's a problem. That's, hard, that's a hard conversation to have, though, if we ask the front-end developer, is the website secure? Eleanor might be able to say, well, I'm the front-end developer. I make sure that I'm not putting any cross-site scripting vulnerabilities into the templates that I'm writing, but I also know that a lot of WordPress vulnerabilities happen at the layer of file permissions, and it's somebody else's job to worry about those, and I really don't have time to talk to them. Uh, so not a great answer, but that's the reality for many teams. If we ask our designer, Eduardo, is the web presence, all of it, all of the sites, is it on brand? He might say, well, I designed a starter theme or I designed a, a parent theme that is on brand, but different departments take that and they fork it and I don't know what happens after that and I can't chase everyone down, so no, I cannot tell you comprehensively if all of our websites are on brand. So, uh, so what do we do here? Uh, my recommendation, is to first catch the wrong things faster. WordPress as a community, one of the things I love about WordPress is that it has very detailed, very prescripting coding standards for things like, do you put spaces between the square brackets? Uh, uh, the correct answer is no, you don't if the thing inside is a string, and yes, you do if the thing inside uh, is a variable. Now, I would have a hard time keeping track of that just in my brain, but there are automated tools that check this stuff in milliseconds so darn fast. So I would highly recommend, if you're writing your own custom WordPress code and you want to be in compliance with WordPress coding standards, automate the checking of that because a computer can check these rules so much faster and more accurately than a person can. Now, this is not the type of stuff the compliance officer is gonna care about when they say, is your website on brand? And you say, well, I put the spaces right in the square brackets. And that's not what they're asking about. Uh, but that does start to set the culture of like, we care about details here. And if you have that culture, then you can carry it forward into uh, other things. Uh, another element I, I love about the WordPress community is the concept of base themes or, or parent themes. And this is something we extend in, in Pantheon's custom upstreams feature. The idea that if a university has a central IT team that is responsible for things like SSO plugins and a base theme, they should be able to distribute those updates. Anytime there's an update to one of those uh, elements of code, they should be able to update to all, of, all the other sites pretty darn quickly. That's hard to do if there isn't a clear, straightforward path to doing that. So if we can catch the wrong things fast, and if we can make it easy to do the, the right thing, perhaps we can open up more time and space to more proactively ask ourselves, uh, is the website accessible for, for 
people who truly need to use a keyboard. Like, yes, we can run the automated checkers that'll, that'll catch the low-hanging fruit for accessibility, but ideally, we've got human beings spending real time trying to navigate the website with keyboards and, and uh, beyond. And if you don't have time and space for that because you're spending all of your time just trying to get updates to the base theme uh, or the parent theme all the way out to all the sites, uh, you're going to have a bad time when it comes to compliance. And oh boy, let's now get to stability. Alone under the old library's crest, Nicholas made a temporary nest. Obsessed, he types faster. A man possessed, distressed, he's now got space to ingest. What blocks have done to beloved WordPress? One week removed from the relaunch, egressed from his soul to the live domain addressed, Nicholas now has time to learn, digest. With the MacBook Pro just under his his chest, a drive to test, though not yet test driven, riveted, reacting with no action, his regard a 202 reaction. As React wrestles requests requestioned, JSON responds with fast satisfaction. Just tests return green, exit code zero. This hero of WordPress rests. Yes, he rests. At this sunny summer hour, Nick feels blessed. Early morning shadows shrink in the west. The library's silence is then recessed as rubber shoes clap an important quest. Eleanor whisper shouts, plug-in updates? Three unapplied security updates? Nick waits. Don't take the bait as if he did not know this was already on his plate? Did you read the details, Eleanor? Did you see the attack vectors do not apply to our site at all before you came and wrecked my perfect, quiet morning? Eleanor can't believe it. The hubris. <laughs> Just apply the darn updates, Nicholas. Nick Whisper shouts back with growing fervor. First, I need a working staging server. The updates apply fine on my machine, but I won't shortcut deployment hygiene. Excuses, excuses, thinks Eleanor. As she says, well, I'll tweak markup some more. This story began with a missing link. Now we find the whole web team out of sync. There's a lot going on here that is pushing this team out of sync. I think one of the, the biggest pressures that is pushing web teams out of sync with one another is we have different pictures in our head. What does it mean to have a stable website? And how do we configure the servers below and our release processes to make a stable website. If you ask AWS, I'm not expecting anyone to internalize this diagram. This diagram is here to overwhelm you. But if you ask AWS, how do you run a high performance, scalable, fault tolerant WordPress site? AWS says you can buy these nine individual AWS pro products and configure them just this way. Now this is just the WordPress part for a, a web presence, just the live environment. This is not dev environments and test environments. This is not your local environment. This is just the WordPress live environment for one site. And some universities have hundreds or thousands of websites. Now let's, uh, let's shrink that down to just one part of the broader web ecosystem that we sometimes uh, keep in our heads. I, I'm looking at the time here. I've got 11 minutes left. I, I sometimes devote 45 minutes just to this slide. <laughs> so I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna animate this stuff in really fast uh, because websites have gotten extraordinarily complex in the last few years. Uh, I, I pin a lot of it to the release of the iPhone in 2007 and the iPad in 2010. Systems like WordPress and Drupal were not as fast to adapt to those sorts of devices. So front-end developers accurately see, oh, we need to write code closer to these incredibly powerful computers that everyone carries in their pockets that have 
cameras and they rotate and do things that WordPress was not prepared for. So we're just gonna write our JavaScript code over here. Maybe we won't even talk to the backend developers. We'll push up to a CI server. The front, the uh, site visitor's computer can then do client-side rendering and just like reach into WordPress and grab data out. That works to some extent. It makes things insecure. It can make things slow. So you add a CDN to hopefully make things more secure and faster, but still it can be problematic. What did we do with the WP campus site in uh, 2020? I worked with, uh, with Rachel to do this way of doing a site where you send the data from WordPress to a CI server and it gets incredibly complex. And now people are saying, no, let's just put a Node.js server in the middle. And again, uh, this is too darn complex for most web teams to think about on a day by day basis. No wonder uh, it feels like things are crumbling all the way down to that server layer when we uh, don't have agreement on what is the ideal server infrastructure for running a stable website. Kels didn't race in the Gutenberg dash. She was too busy, a one woman stash of interdependent code written in bash. When anything breaks, she answers, not crass, calmly asks, have you tried clearing the cache? <laughs> Teaming masses, many massive demands, yet still no team for this center of mass. Understaffed since Y2K didn't crash. Kelsey sighs and sips her tea, Earl Grey, hot, out of her own class of 99 mug. She's seen the decades since go in a flash. Flash. <laughs> Just another trendy fad dispatched. She and Janitor Jane empty trashes, Kelsey RMs some once applied patches, while Jane collects commencement gown sashes, swept up and then tossed out with the ashes. The tea splashes and the moment passes. On her desk, a new ThinkPad dashingly sits atop a steely sticker Brashly reading simply, this machine kills fascists. Her worries of rainbow table hashes and interdepartmental clashes fly from her head when Nicholas smashes doors shouting, the staging server crashes. Kelsey doesn't look up. She plainly says, I know. Do you know why? Nick asks and huffs. No, I don't. I'll get to that when I'm done setting up this laptop and other stuff that I'll be bringing to Alexi, the new director of alumni giving. <laughs> Kelsey weighs how much time to spend helping new hires who might not last a semester against the pressure to unblock updates for web devs who do know how to pester. Hmm, hmm, Alexi can take it from here. Hey, my name's Kelsey, here's your new laptop. Alexi looks up from crumpled post-it notes. Let me know if you need anything else, says Kels, as she's already turned to leave. Can you help me make a website, says Alexi. Kelsey has heard this type of question before. So to avoid taking work she'll abhor, her answer should be bright and sound helpful. More than it might really um, be helpful. Yes, I can. I'll provision a VM, Kelsey says. Ubuntu or Debian? Never mind, says Alexi through tight lips. I'll go my own and I'll just use Wix. <laughs> oh, too close to home on that one. <laughs> all right, so uh, all of our characters are stressed out, they're upset. They feel like they're isolated uh, on their own. Uh, I think this is a common experience among university web teams. Uh, I think uh, Paul in the, in the previous session said something like it, like, oh yeah, in, higher education, IT, and, and web development, you're always getting more responsibilities, and you never get more time or staff or budget. And he's given me the five minutes. Thanks there, Paul. Uh, so my recommendation, my broad recommendation for what to do in these sorts of situations is pick tools 
pick processes and find coworkers who are on board with the idea that we should be minimizing the toiling kind of work, that we should identify the kind of work that takes up too much time, but is not all that valuable. And I mean, that's kind of the basic idea of WordPress. Uh, I imagine much, many of us in the room have written our own CMS and then realized, oh, I should not be writing my own CMS. And then, oh, WordPress is just a good version of that. Let's go with WordPress. There are versions of that for all aspects of web development. And if we can get to that world where we have uh, enough time and space to think beyond our role, where our own responsibilities aren't taking up 100% of our time, well then, you know, uh, we can move toward that better future where we can uh, fully support the mission of our institution. We could perhaps, you know, even just pairing up our, our systems administrator and backend developer might say to one another, let's straighten out our deployment pipeline, release faster, and get better uptime. We can automate manual clicking to stop regressions while clocks are ticking. For our folks concerned about uh, conversions, short-term thinking got us in this cluster. Wait, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Luck is not enough for long-term luster. The director of communications, who's been at this university a long time, might say, you know what questions the president asks. So work backwards to make your list of tasks. And for our folks in the middle, we can clean up this UX mess. Success will follow from a simple user test. And finally, our updates to the donate form are void unless we test on an old, cheap Android. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Uh, that's, that's it. <laughs>